In this Go High Level tutorial, we're going to go over the website builder. Let's get started. So logging in on the left hand side, we're going to go to sites. So let's start with the website. So first thing we're going to do is click new website. It's right behind my big blue button behind my face. Great. It's going to say from blank or templates. I recommend starting with the templates just because it's quicker, faster, and they have a whole library of pre-made ones that you could do tweaking. So click continue. They have many different templates uh, based on industry on the left hand side or on the right hand side, you can sort by types. So I'm just going to pick any one just to start off. This looks like a good one. You could preview it and then click continue. I know it continues the button right behind my face to add it to the page. So that's the great thing about using go high level is the templates just give you a base level. It already has like the sections already has a lot of the font. Um, nicely made. So unless you're a professional building it from scratch, you know exactly how to build funnels and websites from scratch. Uh, that's why I recommend going with a template because then you could do a lot of the tweaking behind this behind it. So the first thing that we're going to do is get comfortable with text blocks. So on the left hand side, click the plus symbol in the upper left hand corner. And then under elements, you can see headline and paragraph for the main two different ones. I'm going to click on headline, click and drag and drag and drop it above our little section right here so that we have text. And we're going to now format the text so that it looks exactly like this. So to change the color, I'm going to highlight and scroll to the right hand side. You can see color block right here. I'm going to click on that and plus white. Perfect. Then I'm going to align it to the left hand side. So if I scroll up, there's a line. And then I'm going to make the font bigger down here, font size. Perfect. Next, I'm going to change the font type. So I'm going to highlight the text. And then right here is where the font is. And then I'm going to change it to Roboto. You can change it to whatever you like. Next, I want to show you margin and padding. So if I want to increase the space between this section and this section, if I click on the inside of the box, scroll to the very bottom, here's your margin and padding. I'm going to click down here and add a 20 pixel bump. So see how it makes that space bigger below. So that's how you can separate two different ones. Next, if I want to move elements around, I'm going to put my mouse over it. There's these four little squares. I'm going to click and hold, and then I could drag it to move around sections. Perfect. If I want to duplicate a section so I can add it to another part of the page, for example, if I highlight my mouse over it, I could click on these two little squares to duplicate, and then I could drag it to another section, for example. Lastly, if I want to delete text elements, so I'm going to highlight my mouse over it, click on the trash can, boom, and boom. Next, let's talk about adding sections to the page. So if I highlight my mouse over the plus symbol, go down to go down to pre-built sections. They have like all these different sections like about, team, testimonials. So these are nice because these are already pre-made sections. So I'm going to add an about. I'm going to find the one that I like, click and drag and drag and drop. Click on the X and now I've added a section. The next text element that we want to add are the ones that have these little like check boxes or icons, for example. So to add that, I'm going to click on the plus symbol, click on elements, click on paragraph, click and drag and drag and drop below. Perfect. Next, I'm just going to grab some text from right up here just to place it into that little new paragraph and we'll format it just like the other section. So I'm going to highlight. We're going to go down first to size. Let's actually match the size. This is font 18. So I'm gonna click on this and then just type in 18. Boom. I know it's a little hard to tell. So it's right there. Now let's change the color. Let's make it white. Perfect. And let's align it to the left. Perfect. Now let's add the blue little check mark icon. So if we click on that box, scroll down, and we go to icons. If you type check for check mark, you can see the little icon right there. I'm going to click on it. Now to change the color of it, we're going to scroll down, go to icon color, click on it and choose the dark blue. Perfect. Now notice that mine is not aligned like the others, for example. So that has to do with the padding. So if I click on the one above it, I can see that the other one has a 10 padding here and a 20 pixel padding here. So I'm going to match those settings with mine down here. Click on that one. I'm going to add 10. And then this one right here add 20. And now it's a line looking like the other ones. Next, we're going to talk about images. So let's replace this image with an image of me, for example. So I'm first going to remove this picture by clicking on it. Click the trash can icon. And let's go ahead and now add a picture element. So plus symbol, element. You can even type search image, for example. There's our image, drag and drop, boom. So now if we scroll to the right hand side under image options, click on the little icon of the image. Brings up our media storage. We're going to click upload. 
and upload a picture that we have saved to our computer. Once the image is uploaded, you're going to click on the image and then click on copy URL. It's going to copy the link and then we're click X to close out X to close out and go ahead and paste that URL right here in that box right there. And then you have your image next. Let's add a section on the web page so that we could put a form so that people could fill out the form and contact us. So I'm going to scroll to the very bottom of the page. I'm going to click on the plus symbol, go to pre-built sections, go to call to action. And I'm just going to choose the first one, drag and drop. Perfect. Next, I'm just going to delete these sections just to make it very easy. For example, I'm going to get rid of this button because we're going to put a form right below here. So here, contact us, select, and then we get a line center. Perfect. So now we have a section. Let's go ahead and name this section. Let's call it form. That's going to be important when we create our button later on, for example. So next, let's go ahead and save and create a form. So I'm going to click on save. So now that it's saved, but it's not published because we don't have a domain yet. Let's go back to go high level. And now under the sites, we're going to go to forms and we're going to go to form builder. Next, let's click on add form. There are many different ones from templates. So if you click continue, you can choose a style if you like from here, but we're just going to create one from scratch. So I'm going to close, click add form, start from scratch, click create. It already has the main elements that we need. So now let's just clean it up. I'm going to click on this section here for phone. Click on the X because we don't need it. This first name and last name, I'm just going to remove both of these and just add a field just for full name. So under here on the plus symbol, we're going to click on the plus so we can see all the different elements that we can add. I'm going to click on full name, drag and drop. Makes it very easy. Next, they have their email. You definitely want to keep this consent form, especially if you want to do SMS marketing. So we're just going to leave it just like that. But you can click on it and edit any of the settings in the right hand side. Next, I'm just going to remove this section for privacy and terms. Those are at the bottom of the website. So I just need a very simple form and then be sure to give your form a name. This is very important. That's going to be very important for a lot of the automations and when we add it to our website. So name it, click save. Perfect. Let's go back to our website. Click on the back. Again, again it's sites website. While we're here in the website section, notice that they already created other pages already done since we chose the template, which is really helpful. They created a page for services, for blogs, for booking a call, like an appointment, and then more importantly, the thank you page, because after they fill out the form on the website, we want to send them to a thank you page. So here, if you click on the three little dots, click on settings, when we hook up our domain and our website, it's going to be our website.com slash thank you. So let's keep that in mind. So then we're going to go to our homepage right here, click on edit, and now let's add our form. So scroll to the very bottom, click on the plus sign, click on elements, type in form, click and drag. It's going to ask us what form we have our demo form. Perfect. Now, if you want to change the padding, you could do that right here, add some fillers, for example. But the most important thing is right here, what happens after they fill out that form? We want to send them to our thank you page. So we're going to click go to URL. And let's say my website is test.com slash thank you. Perfect. Go ahead and click save. Next, let's quickly talk about SEO on your website. So click on the very top over this section right here, SEO metadata, click on that. Let's go ahead under context, give our website a title, John's website. You could go ahead and give it a description, awesome website services. Then you can add any keywords, website, marketing. You can ask ChatGPT to give you a bunch of keywords, for example. That's the main one starting off. Go ahead and click update SEO. Next, let's go ahead and connect this to a domain, for example, because you can notice right here, it's just using Go High Levels placeholder domain, for example. It's asking us to connect a domain and we haven't hit the publish button yet. We're just go ahead and and we're saving our page because once we hit publish, it will be ready to go live, but we don't have a domain. So let's do that next. Go ahead and click on the back. If you go to settings on the bottom side, then in settings on the left hand side, scroll all the way down and go to domains here. Go ahead and click connect a domain. Let's type a domain name. If you don't know where to buy a name, there's porkbun.com, which is a great place. I buy all my websites from Porkbun. It's super cheap. You can also go to Namecheap, which is another website to find a domain.com. So once you purchase a domain from one of those websites, stay logged in to those accounts. Go ahead and click on domain, type test.com. Click on continue. Now it's going to ask us to connect the domain records. I recommend clicking on add records manually. And then now what you want to do is go to your provider where you bought the domain go to DNS settings and you're going to add these records, a record, the host and the required value. Just copy those, add those to the records. So when people go to that domain.com, it's going to redirect them to your website. And then you go ahead and click verify. 
Once your website is verified, let's go ahead and go back and add that to our website. So let's go back, go to sites, go to our homepage, click on edit. Now that we have our web page all ready to go, let's go ahead and click publish. It's going to say, hey, what domain do you want to add this to? I'm just going to connect this to one of my other domains. Click save. And then what's going to happen is this section right here is going to be linked to that domain.com. I don't want to do it because I already have my website linked to another domain. So this is where you'll see yourname.com where you could click on it and you'll be able to view your web page with the form. Next, let's talk about buttons. When they click on this button, I want it to take them all the way down to this page on, on the website. So what I'm going to do, remember down here, we've already named by clicking on this section right here and giving this element a name, we could go ahead and find it for buttons. So if I click on this button and again, to find buttons, but first let's add a button. So I'm going to click on the plus symbol elements type button, click and drag. Now you could go through the different settings to format it, but we're just going to do the action just to keep it simple. So I'm going to click on this one. That's why it's real nice to use the templates. They've already done the stylizing. So when they click on this button, if we go to the very bottom, the most important thing is the action. What happens when they click on it? Instead of go to page, I want it to say, scroll to an element. And then you could go ahead and scroll all the way down to the button. And there's our element that named we named it form. So I click on that. So it will take them. So when I click on this to this form element, so let's go ahead and click save and then be sure to publish. And then when we test it and they click on that button, it takes them all the way down to the bottom page. Perfect. Now, since we use a template, it already built out our other sections right here for like services and for blog, for example. So to edit those, if we go back to our editor, you could get to those by on the left hand side right here, it says pages and there's your service page that's already pre-built, which is nice. Click on page, click on page. And then you can see also your other ones such as blog, for example. And then you would just repeat the process to just to change it. You could also get to these pages right up here and you could choose the page that you want. The last thing I want to do is make sure my website looks good on mobile device too. So I'm going to click on pages, go to homepage, for example, and then we've been designing everything so that it looks good on a desktop. How about mobile? So that's this button right up here. So it's already formatted everything, but you would still want to do some final tweaks. Say for example, if you want to make that a little bit bigger or smaller, you could make change the size, for example make this a little bit bigger, center this if you wanted. I basically just want to show review how it looks on mobile and then go ahead and click save and then publish. That way, you know, your, your website looks good on both desktop and mobile devices. And that's the website builder for go high level. We've added text, we've modified it. We've done formatting. We've added buttons. We've added a form. We've linked our domain. We used a template to start off. So it makes it very easy to start from scratch, for example. And then we also checked it. So it looks good on mobile for those business owners that get overwhelmed with tech and don't want to deal with any of the setup that go of go high level. They just want it built and tailored for their business. You could go ahead and go to empireprotools.com. That's my website where my agency will build everything you need and go high level from websites to automations, to calendar booking, to funnels, to ads so that you could turn website visitors into leads, into sales on autopilot, go ahead and go to empireprotools.com, link is in the bio, and we could build it out for you. So you could focus on serving your clients. If you want to stay up with the latest digital marketing trends, AI, I recommend joining my AI mastermind community. We talk about AI and digital marketing to help grow your business. And we have a free meetup every Saturday virtually on Zoom so that you can attend and learn. Just to give you guys a little context, I started Go High Level like four weeks ago and it was super overwhelming trying to figure out all the settings and how do you do all the buttons, how do you connect everything together and how the different settings, it could be overwhelming, but just stick with it. But keep in mind, Go High Level, they sell to marketing agencies. They don't sell to local businesses because it's way too complex for local business owners. For example, I do a lot of websites for coaches. And yes, it's a very affordable at $97 a month. But if you're not tech savvy or don't have any digital marketing skills, don't don't know how to build funnels or even turn website visitors into leads. That's why I recommend for small businesses, you want to hire a marketing agencies so that they can build and tailor Go High Level for your business. You don't need every feature. For example, you just want it specialized and tailored to your business so that you can have your two funnels, one for lead magnet, one for a sales page. It has great copywriting, a video sales letter. It's really optimized so that you could turn any traffic that you're getting either from organic or from paid ads into leads and then automatically into sales using the automation because it is 
it is incredibly powerful. For example, a lot of clients that I enroll into Go High Level, they'll like double their revenue in about six months. Just through the automation, it's so streamlined. They've been using a bunch of different tools before. So my clients love it. And that's why I recommend work with an agency so that they can build and tailor Go High Level. It's way faster so that you can focus on serving your clients. So I hope you found this valuable. Please like and subscribe. It goes a long way to grow the channel. And I greatly appreciate it. I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.